I'm here in Gothenburg in Sweden today to test a prototype Volvo S60 which has been fitted with a Kinetic Energy Recovery System or KERS. Um, that phrase is probably familiar from Formula One. The technology is actually very similar. It uses a uh, compact flywheel which is mounted at the back of this car and driving the, um, the rear axle. Um, and what that does is uh, it captures energy from the car as the car slows down and it stores that in mechanical form in this very high spinning flywheel which spins at up to 60,000 rpm. And then when we need an additional power boost, it releases that energy again directly into the, into the back axle to drive the car along. Uh, now this prototype can do that in one of two ways. It can either uh, use that stored energy that's captured in the flywheel on the rear axle um, as an addition to the car's economy, helping to uh, push the car along and helping to reduce the dependency on fuel or there's also a sport mode where you can release all of that energy which is up to 80 horsepower in addition to the 240 horsepower that this S60 T5 possesses uh, from its um, uh, conventional engine at the front. So it can release that extra 80 horsepower to give you a real shove as you're going along. Uh, and it reduces the uh, naught to 60 time of this car by about 1.5 seconds. So I'm gonna take it for a spin now and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm driving the, um, the experimental S60 on Volvo's test track at the moment. There's a sound uh, from the flywheel at the back that's a little bit like a washing machine on its spin cycle. And that noise will build up over time um, as the system captures energy. I don't know if you can hear that building up to its 60,000 RPMs at the back. I'm in sport mode at the moment, which means that when I'm driving along gently as I am at the moment, um, some of the forward motion from the car is, is sort of leached off, captured at the back um, and stored for those moments when, as I'm in sport mode, I might want to drive sportily. So I'm just gently driving round the corners at the moment and as we come onto the straight later, we'll be able to see what kind of uh, impact the additional 80 horsepower has on the car. Most of the time when you're driving the car, it feels completely normal. The, um, the integration between the engine that's driving the front axle and the curve system which is stepping in and out driving the rear axle, it, it's very seamless. You really wouldn't know it was there other than the spinning noise that you can hear from the back. Let's see what the, um, the acceleration feels like. And there, as we get to a certain point, the power really does kick in and you feel that extra shove of an additional 80 horsepower. In the hybrid mode, economy is the name of the game. And here, exactly as you would see in an electrical hybrid system, the flywheel is just there to try and squirrel away energy that would otherwise go to waste in the braking system. So what it's doing is, as the car slows down, as we descend hills, as we touch the brake pedal to slow down, Instead of all of that energy being wasted as heat in the braking system, it's being captured and stored in that flywheel. The flywheel will build up the, with, with as much energy as it can. It can store up to 150 watt hours, which is not much compared to the batteries that you have in uh, electrical hybrids, but it is enough to make a big difference. Volvo's come up with quite an interesting um, system for road cars and the KERS is a purely mechanical system. It allows you to store the momentum of the vehicle directly in momentum in a flywheel and that you know from an engineering standpoint that has to be a more efficient and a, be and a better idea so if Volvo can make this technology reliable and cheap enough uh, to go in road cars I think it could be a real breakthrough. 